Hello, my darlings. I am coming to you the day after the 2020 election uh, with a little message and a little prophecy and a little wisdom. I was text messaging earlier uh, with uh, my assistant, Emma, and she was so sweet. She's like, I think people need to hear from you right now. And I was like, I believe that to be true. <laughs> so I've had this message um, on my heart since I woke up. It's now the afternoon. I was finally able to put it into some words and into some context uh, for you. And as you're listening to this message, I really want you to think about, um, I just want you to take a big deep breath into your heart. <sighs> And just hold that. That was not as big of a deep breath as you should take. Maybe you should take a deeper one. I don't know. Maybe I need to calm down. But really think about um, how to take this message and really use it to tap into your intuition and what you're hearing in your heart and in your soul about what to do next. Because as you know, in the election yesterday, first of all, we don't have any answers. But also, I really want to make it abundantly clear that yesterday's election was not a referendum on racism. And in fact, as things are panning out and more votes are coming into play, we are becoming to, coming to realize that this is not just not a referendum on racism, but it's actually an embracing of misogyny and racism and white supremacy. Um, in this country, Donald Trump got more votes than he did in 2016. And um, that should terrify a great many people for a number of reasons. I was thinking this morning about that saying, better the devil you know than the devil you don't. And I think for many of us, the last four years have been an awakening and I want to say to you, welcome. Because for many of us, we have been doing this work for decades. And for many more people, they've been doing this work for lifetimes. And um, I really, I really want to say to you, never fear. There is room for all of us at the table. And this is really the thing that I think is really important right now for all of us to understand. Don't run away from the table. There is room for all of us to sit together in the glory of connection. To talk about racism and white supremacy and misogyny and the patriarchy and fear and shame and guilt and sacred rage. There is space for all of us at that table. And I think that it's incredibly important, especially if you are curious about asking hard questions and getting hard answers, that you embrace this moment in history. I really want you to remember that you are a beacon of justice and light. And I want you to think about expanding your heart wide open to receiving the messages that are happening and coming to us right now at this moment. I want you to think about focusing on what matters most to you in this day, in this week, in this month, in the rest of this year. Focus on what this election means to you and to the people in your neighborhood and in your circle and in your life. This is not a resounding disruption of racism and misogyny. In fact, I would say that this is an election steeped in fear of what we don't know. This nation chose to embrace terror over difference. 
it is an obvious moment that this is an awakening of spirit. That this work is not going to be done in these four year chunks. We cannot, as a nation, continue to operate in two year and four year chunks. It took us 400 years to get to this moment right now in time. We don't have another 400 years to dismantle the legacy of racism and white supremacy and misogyny. We can't do that to our children's children. This is the moment where we transform our fear into action. This is the moment where you breathe deep into that heart and you open yourself to expanding your ideas of what you think is real and what you think you know. This is a calling for you to think about how we have so much more work to do and it is not done. This is a lifetime of disruption and dismantling and discovering our thoughts about race and misogyny and whiteness and what it means to operate in a world collectively as community. I would love for you to imagine, if you will, that 20 of us are sitting at a big pine table in the woods. Think about that glorious table set with food and drink. And we are all sitting there together, breaking bread with each other. Everybody is a literal stranger. Not one person has known the other before they came to sit at that table. Everyone has the common vision of a world that is better for their children and their grandchildren. But not one of the people at the table has the same idea about how to get there. Everybody has a different idea about what that could mean and what that could look like and how that could happen. How do we talk to each other in that moment of sitting around that beautiful pine table in glorious comfy chairs, eating and drinking and passing food? The twinkling candles on the table, the dim lighting, the moment where we come together in that beautiful space. How do you spend the next few hours together with virtual strangers? All with the common vision of a life that is better for their children and their grandchildren. Do you hurl epithets at each other? Do you throw food because you're mad? How do you act in that moment sitting at that table where everyone is welcome to talk about the vision of a future that is full of love and compassion and nonviolence and dare I say grace and joy? We have spent over 400 years living in a nation that is hell bent and steeped in misogyny and patriarchy and white supremacy and racism. It is my prayer today that all of us can collectively come together and actively engage in it not taking 400 more damn years to get out of this. We have got to be vulnerable. We have got to talk about what terrifies us in these moments. We have got to talk about why we don't buck the system and push up against it and work to destroy it. We have got to make amends to our, for our own racist transgressions. All of us have racist transgressions. And we must ask for grace, we must ask for compassion and love. 
and we must ask for a change in this system that upholds the structures of white women voting against their own self-interest because they are too terrified to think outside that box. Voting against the own interests of their sisters who may be indigenous, black, Mexican, Brazilian, Puerto Rican, Hawaiian. We constantly and consistently vote against the collective in favor of the patriarchy. I would love to encourage each one of you to think about what it would mean to take nonviolent action moving forward. What would it look like to you to take nonviolent action moving forward? How can you leverage your sacred rage to change your own community? What do you need from me to help you do that? What do you need from other community leaders to help you do that? What do you need from your priests and your pastors and your elected officials to help you do that? What do you need to have the tools to do this? Send me an email and tell me. I'm happy to help you find the tools. The true root of evil is remaining silent right now. The true root of evil is dismissing your calling to make change. Every single one of you follows me for a reason. There's something inside of you that says, yes, I want to harness my rebellion. Yes, I want to harness my passion. Yes, I want to go out and change the world. Now is the time. It was the time in 2016. It was the time in 2018. And damn if it isn't the time in 2020. It is time. We do not have the, the time anymore to live in two and four year increments. The true root of eagle is to struggle against the voice of God when they beg you to disrupt the narrative that some of us are better than others. We are no better than any other human being on this planet. Erasing the homeless so we don't have to deal with them. Erasing the children so we don't have to hear them. Erasing the parents so that we don't have to provide them with a place where they can work and be free. Beloveds, we are at a crossroads. And I invite you to join me at the table. I invite you to engage in wonderful acts of joyful curiosity about what it would look like to actually dismantle racism and white supremacy in your own life. What would it mean to you to sit at that table and call in an understanding of difference? What would you do if you knew you were welcome and beloved and could be fully embraced in the entirety of who you are at that table. If I had the opportunity to help you understand how to call in an understanding of difference, what would you need to hear to feel safe enough to do it? Now is the time for you to harness your magic and listen to your intuition. What is it saying? What is it telling you to do next? Now is the time for you to join me at that beautiful table. Let's change the conversation. Let's stop hurling epithets and fear and hard boiled eggs at each other. Let's look at an idea of a world free of misogyny and white supremacy where we're able to talk like women, like humans, like people, all of us around that table. 
actions speak louder than words. My God, I cannot tell you how often I heard that as a kid. Well, you say you want to do something, but you're not acting on it. Do not be surprised about the news that we are going to be getting in the next couple of days. Use the shock to do something different. Use your sacred rage to dig deep into your heart and listen to what it is telling you at exactly this moment. Use this shock to do something different than you have ever done before. And if you are part of my world and part of Natural Born Rebel and part of this legacy that I am leaving for my children and grandchildren, I want you to know why. I want you to know that what burns inside of me is this flame of community and change that is passed down from my great great grandmother and my great grandmother and my grandmother. I want you to know that I don't just do this work for me. I do this work because it is a compulsion. I can't not. I want you to listen to your compulsion for shifting, for learning, for rebellion. Now is the time. Now is that hour. I love you deeply. If you need me, tell me. I'm here for you all the time.